Police have now expanded their search of the property where Philip Garrido held J.C. Dugard for years into the yard next door. At this point, we're uh, going thoroughly through both backyards. That's because Garrido was the caretaker here. The new resident says when he moved in, he found door locks installed to lock someone inside. And investigators are still going through the backyard compound where J.C. was imprisoned. These are the first photos from inside, showing up close the disturbing conditions in which she was held captive. In a cluttered tent, clothing, toys, and boxes are piled in disarray among mattresses and dressers. Mike and Rogers, who owns right the lot next night. door, says he never saw yeah, girls back there, but he sometimes right heard men here. having loud parties. I, I don't know what they were doing, but it sounded like they were probably, you know, having sex or something in there, partying, who knows, you know, heard some screaming, but... Unless I, I didn't see it. Now, as investigators comb through the backyard prison, they are searching for evidence that could link Garrido to other crimes. And police are taking a new look at a string of cold cases of missing and murdered women in the area. It's an exploratory investigation, and we're just trying to see if there's any link, any possible link between Philip Garrido and those open cases. 15-year-old Lisa Norell disappeared in November 1998. Her body was discovered a week later. Her mother says investigators told her they're looking for evidence Garrido was involved. But I don't want to think about the pain she probably went through. I don't know. As investigators look for answers, neighbors keep asking one question. How could a sex offender on parole keep a secret backyard prison for years? John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco.